Hello everyone and welcome to another video review. Today I'm taking a look at Transformers War for Cybertron Siege Leader Class Shockwave from, well I've already said it, War for Cybertron Siege. But before we take a look at the toy, let's take a look at the box. So here is Shockwave's great big box. Um, if you weren't able to tell already by what I've told you, this is Shockwave. He is the 14th figure in the War for Cybertron line. As we can see here, the War for Cybertron Trilogy, Siege, Transformers. This is for ages 8 and up. Of course, that's just suggestion. They have suggestion, but they have to put that on there. This is manufactured by Hasbro. He is a Transformer, as you can tell, because it says Transformers along the side. This is from the Generations line, co-manufactured by Takara Tomy. Here on the side, we have Shockwave. Very good looking art. There's just a random hand sitting down there. He is a leader class figure, sort of. We'll get to that in a second. You know, here is that nice poster artwork here. He is an authentic Transformer. On the back here is all the stuff Shockwave does. Not really too much stuff to go into here. Don't eat the toy. Plastic doesn't digest easily. He's transformable in 28 steps. You can also buy Ultra Magnus and that's pretty much it for the box. So here we have Shockwave. Uh, he is an interesting figure. He's a very, very interesting figure this time around because uh, he's He's a leader class figure, but, um, and, you know, for when he's in his, his Decepticon, uh, warship mode, I mean, honestly, this is kind of almost like the Nemesis or something. Like, it, I could see this being a version of the Nemesis, uh, depending on what continuity we're in. Now, he looks like a leader class figure when he's got all this on him, but when we get into robot mode, you're going to realize that, um, he's actually more Voyager-sized, and it, it's... And maybe the stuff that comes with him doesn't translate well enough to robot mode to warrant the leader class price tag. But, uh, you know, like I said, we'll get into that, into that discussion in a moment. But for now, I feel like that this vehicle mode does justify his leader class price point. And I, I love this vehicle mode so much. This is such a great vehicle mode. This great big Decepticon warship. I, re I really love it. Lots of nice detail and stuff all over the place, different gun emplacements along the hull and stuff. And, you know, I, I really like this. I really I really think this looks great. And I like that Shockwave's eye up here is is the bridge. I think that's really, really cool. So, yeah, this thing, this thing's really awesome. I love this vehicle mode a lot. Um, Shockwave is a character that he he's very hit or miss, I feel like, when it comes to his vehicle modes. Or should I say alternate modes? Because, you know, depending on your the continuity you're in, he maybe doesn't even have a vehicle mode. For like G1, you know, he's he doesn't have a vehicle. He ha he transforms into a gun. So yeah, that's so that's an alt mode, not a vehicle mode. So yeah, that the gun is the gun is whatever. Uh I, I mean I like I like the fact that he transforms into a gun in G1 because that's G1. But then for other versions, a, a lot of other versions of Shockwave happens he tends to transform into a tank which makes sense because you know what's yeah you know, what is a vehicle version of a gun well it's a tank so that makes sense but then i don't think that a lot of shockwave's vehicle modes in the past in terms of toys have really been that great they've just kind of been whatever shockwave is always a figure that if i pick one up i get it mainly for the uh, robot mode because the robot mode usually looks really great this is one of, this is like one of two exceptions where I'm getting him for more than just the robot mode, and because I love I love this vehicle mode so much, I think it's really really cool. So yeah, I mean I've just kind of been doing the 360 here as I've been I've been talking. So I mean there's not really too much to say here. I mean, it's it's just a, it's just a really cool warship design. I really like it, and then it does have this little landing gear here on the front that we can flip down make it a little more streamlined so yeah so we'll go ahead and flip that back up and we'll get into a size comparison I don't really have Be because of the vehicle here that shockwave transforms into there's not really too much that I really could think of to do for a proper a proper comparison because you know he's a giant spaceship as opposed to, you know, a tank or something like that where he's like, oh, I could bring in a car to, to, to and just put it next to to see if the size is different. But, I mean, considering that I feel like that this is, you know, a giant 
a giant spaceship. You know, it's, <laughs> I can't really bring in a, a car or something, but I'll bring in the next best thing. Here we have Fall of Cybertron Shockwave from 2012, which, you know, is another Cybertronian jet ship thing. And so, yeah, here are the two of them together. This is, so this, this shockwave is like one of the, one of the, it's now one of the two shockwaves I own where I, 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 I actually care about his vehicle mode. I think his vehicle mode is pretty good. Um, because I, I really like this. I really like this mode. It was fun to play in the video games that it appeared in and then, and it works really well as a toy as well. The Fall of Cybertron toy line had a lot, had a lot of great toys in it. This being one of them. It's like, this is a great looking vehicle mode. I love, I love what they what they did here and what they managed to do with the with the shockwave design and and it's and it still kind of has that it still kind of has that homage to the gun because you know this is the this is the cannon this is the gun right here and it's up in the front so yeah we can see that we've got these two together very 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 different vehicle modes but they're both kind of these different cybertronian spacecraft and i think i think that is a vehicle mode that suits shockwave very well shockwave like megatron is a decepticon that always strikes me as never wanting to lower himself to adopting an earth mode um obviously i i'm not megatron obviously has adopted earth modes in the past you look at dark of the moon megatron he was a truck um age of extinction galvatron of course was a truck um I think the new, yeah, there's the new Earthrise Megatron. He's going to transform into an Earth tank. Um, and then I guess, is, it, would Armada Megatron be an Earth tank? Or is that a Cybertron? I, I don't know. Animated Megatron, of course, he was that Earth attack helicopter. But, so Megatron has obviously had Earth modes in the past. But Shockwave, I don't think he's been a character that's ever really had an earth mode too often well there there is that kind of like one sports car one that was based on the i think the dreamwave comics but that's like the one exception to the rule i can't really think of any others most of the time he's some sort of cybertronian tank or something like that so that's kind of that's kind of in, that's kind of interesting so yeah that's that's like i said that's really all i could think of for a proper comparison so yeah we've had a good look at the vehicle mode now let's go ahead and get down to his transformation now, the transformation on this guy is interesting because, well, there's, in a lot of ways, there's actually not much transforming going on here and there's more parts forming. So we'll go ahead and get that started here. So first we want to get these parts separated. This one tabs in really strong. I have a bit of a problem getting it loose. There we go. That worked a little better there. And as we can see, this is all just coming off right there and we'll remove it and we've got some progress made already so you know here's one of the big chunks that comes off we'll just flip that down flip that down and then from there it doesn't really fold in anymore it you can just kind of possess position this however you want usually just kind of leave it like so Put it off to the side. Now we have these pieces here. Just want to wiggle that and this entire thing removes from the leg. Take this thing and remove it from the leg. So now we've got these pieces here and then these can separate down into their component parts as well. You just take that off and you take that off and now we've got more loose chunks. So again, we'll just Put those all, all off to the side. I'll bring them in so we can just kind of take a look at them. Yep. Chunks move off to the side. And so then now here we have the prime base of Shockwave that doesn't have any other extra bits and pieces on him. So we'll go ahead and flip that in. And then, oh, well, hello, What what is this? This is Shockwave Cybertronian Gun Mode. Look at that. So this is some. This is a little sneaky little thing that the that the designers put in there. Is that is that when you put them like this, yeah, it, it, turn them upside down. He's it, it's Shockwave's G1 Gun Mode, which you know because of the way toys are made nowadays. You know it's why it's why Megatron hasn't made a gun since you know 1984. Um, 
and you know, it's and he's been tanks or planes or whatever from the it's, it's the same rule applies to shockwave you can't exactly sell guns as toys unless they're brightly colored nerf stuff so that's kind of limited the Ver the, the gun versions of these characters that you could do from G1. So the designers have been a little sneaky here. They they made a gun mode for Shockwave, had you turn it upside down, and then put extra stuff on it to make a Cybertronian battleship. But then when you have them like this, it's it's, shock it's Shockwave's gun mode. So you can, you know, zap Autobots with that. So I think that's I think that's really cool. That's the, Honestly, this is one of the reasons I wanted to pick up the toy, just because it had that little extra... That little, that little extra hidden sort of kind of third mode in, hidden in there. I think that's just really neat that they did that. So we'll go ahead and continue on with his transformation here. Get him into robot mode. So first we'll just go ahead and remove his little hose. And then we'll take the legs here. They're tabbed in here at the bottom very securely. There we go. And then we want to get all that untabbed. These little tabs go in to right here. So now that we've got all that untabbed, we can get that folded in like that and turn around. Same thing here, the leg just folds out, fits in, that flips in, and then it's not really a. Well, hold on. The other, the other leg went better. Ah, so the, right. Try to get you to see it. There's a tab that just goes into there. It doesn't really make a clicking noise. It just kind of settles into place. And then th this side is just a little bit loose, but it is in there. It's secured. It just comes out easily so we'll go ahead and call that good so now we have the legs all done so now what we can do is we have the section up here go ahead and lift that up and that allows us to bring down the arms so we kind of have that situated and then really quick we'll pop that down Bring up his head, get all of that re-tabbed into place, maybe if it wants to work with me here. Come on. There we go. Got that into position. And then this will just fold up back into there. And that just settles nice on his back. We'll bring down his arms, take the hose, plug it into Actually, hold on, that's the wrong port. We want to bring it down into here, so that way Shockwave has his hose attached. And then I think we've pretty much got him all situated here. Yeah, I think we do. Yeah, so then here we have Shockwave in his robot mode. And so then here we have Shockwave in his robot mode. We'll get up here and look at his... Normally I'd say face, but I mean, Shockwave doesn't really necessarily ever have a face. He's just got the one eye. So we'll look at his eye here and his eye looks, you know, really good. I really like his eye. His, you know, his head sculpt is very nice. It looks very Shockwave. Very static, very emotionless. He's got some nice light piping here. There's not too many figures in the, uh, in the recent waves of Transformers toys, whether it be Siege or Earthrise or Studio Series or what that has light piping. Shockwave is one of the few and I think it works really really nice on Shockwave here because of his you know singular eye. If any character kind of needs light piping sometimes I think it's Shockwave because of his one eye so yeah overall he is a very nice looking G1 Shockwave. Just gonna do the 360 turn around here of course he has his gun arm here with the hose attached so you can point and shoot um, unfortunately he does not come with a miniature version of himself to hold like he does in that one g1 episode although that would be incredibly funny if they had included that i don't know <laughs> but he does he does not have that 
does have some Decepticon symbols right on his arms, as he did in G1, if I'm not mistaken. So, yeah, he's a, he's a very nice looking shockwave. And of course, you know, there was, so there was that pile of stuff that I put off to the side a minute ago. Here it is in its kind of little gun platform. Oh, this is almost a drum. You know what this really reminds me of? This reminds me of the... That's one downside of this, is that these connection points are very loose, so these just kind of... I mean, I suppose it helps that they can... that the guns can kind of swivel around, but it, it does make for a very loose connection, at least on my copy. But you know what these really remind me of? These remind me of the Decepticon dropships from Dark of the Moon, and we saw them again in Age of Extinction and at Last Night, but they remind me more... Of the, the, uh, they're, they're mainly known from Dark of the Moon, I think, because that was their first appearance. This reminds me of the of the larger, bulkier ones that, that show up. Um, just kind of from a, I, I wonder if this is, if this, if these were, if this thing was inspired by those, just because of the, I, I don't know, just the way the engines, the, the engines are on here and kind of the overall shaping kind of reminds me of those, of those drop ships. So. We do have this, uh, so yeah, it's a, I guess it's a, it could be a drone if you want it to be. You know, it could kind of be hovering along, helping sound, or sound wave, shockwave out. Um, or, of course, as the, the box says, you know, if we want to put this back together, box says shockwave can, of course, ride on it. He's got tabs there in his feet that we can just slide in there, and so then... Now, Shockwave has a little hover device that he can be on. I mean, I, this, I could, ooh, he doesn't, he doesn't stay on there very well, though. Um, but I, I do kind of like the idea of, of him riding on this thing, because I, mean, I imagine him being in his lab and Megatron coming in with prisoners that, for Shockwave to experiment on or something, and then this thing hovers down and there's, shot, and then there's Shockwave, you know, ready to meet, you know, he just, you know, hovers around and, you know, the prisoners are taken off somewhere in the lab. So, uh, I mean, I, I kind of, I'm, it's, obviously this stuff works better on Shockwave when he's in vehicle mode because it actually makes the one great big uh, ship, but I don't, I'm, I don't really think this works that well as, uh, as extra pieces the way Prime's trailer does for Earthrise, you know, the, to, because, you know, it's Optimus Prime, he has his trailer, you know, you can do, you can, I feel like the, the trailer, the extra bits that make up Prime's trailer works better for that character than all this extra stuff does for, for, for Shockwave. Um, the, you can do more with this, but I don't really care for the look. I think it looks a little silly, so I'll just show you the back of the box again. Um, you can do this, you know, you can put, you can, you can put these things here on his feet to give him like little toe guns and then put those on there to give him extra arms. But the extra arms wouldn't really do much because they're just guns. So I guess you just have extra gun arms. Um, and then, you know, there's just kind of the leftover flaps that are down there. I don't really like the look of that at all. So I'm not even gonna bother constructing it for you guys to see. I mean, that's, you, you see what that looks like there. Um, I prefer the little gun platform thing that that this is, and even then, I'm not crazy about it. I but I I really like the way it all looks in uh, in vehicle mode. I just kind of wish that they had managed to figure out how to put it all on the figure without it, you know, needing to be separate and to come off. Because again, not to go back to the Optimus Prime comparison, that work that stuff works with Optimus because the extra stuff that comes with him is the trailer. It doesn't affect the the robot. It doesn't really affect the the robot mode, and and it's such an obvious extra piece of the. Uh, I I don't know. There's just maybe it's just because Optimus has always had the trailer in G1 that you give him the trailer for Earthrise, and it makes sense for that to be a leader because it is this big extra bit of plastic. But then for this extra stuff to be tacked on to Shockwave, even as much as I do love the vehicle mode, it just doesn't work as well. Um, I don't know. I, I, I just feel kind of weird having this. <laughs> having it for Prime, yeah, Prime, it's fine having the trailer in the background, but no, when, on, on the shelf when I've got them displayed in robot mode. But for Shockwave, it feels kind of weird having this just extra stuff sitting there. So, yeah. Um, 
But I don't think that takes away from how good looking this robot mode is. Because, I mean, this is honestly probably one of the best looking shockwaves I've ever seen. I mean, it's straight up G1 shockwave. I mean, this I think this looks better than the actual original G1 shockwave figure. That's not really too much of a surprise because, you know, not all of the G1 figures actually looked anything like their original um, cartoon counterparts. Yeah, you know, look at Ratchet and Ironhide, for instance. Um, because those figures were never really actually meant to be robots. They were actually more like battle stations or whatever that then Hasbro just brought over and called them quote-unquote robots. So, um, Sh Shockwave, I mean, the original Shockwave toy looks fine, but the, the, it doesn't, but this is straight up the original cartoon Shockwave, and I, and I love, and I love the look. So we'll go ahead and get into some size comparisons here. Here he is with Fall of Cybertron Deluxe Shockwave that I showed you guys a few minutes ago. So it's cool to see two different versions of Shockwave here and the similarities in their designs because Shockwave more than, I think with the exception of like Optimus Prime, Shockwave is probably one of the most consistent characters in all Transformers in terms of look. Bumblebee has really changed a lot over the years. Ratchet, Ironhide, Smokescreen, I mean, just you go through the list of almost any Transformers character. They're going to have a lot of different various design changes to them, you know, Megatron especially. Starscream, Starscream usually has a couple traits, but even Star, Star, Starscream has a, usually has some sort of something to where you can tell that Starscream, um, even the movie version has the same kind of design aesthetic where he's got the wings on the back, he's got the, he's got the cockpit on his chest, so Starscream, Prime, and Shockwave, I think they're like the three main characters that have some sort of consistency between the designs, between all their different iterations, which I think is really cool, so... We'll go ahead and move him off to the side. And then speaking of Optimus Prime, here he is with leader Earthrise Prime and War for Cybertron Voyager Megatron. So, yeah. So, I mean, this is just a whole bunch of G1-y goodness right here. I really, I really love this. And as you can see, yeah, this, uh, this leader class Shockwave is actually just a Voyager with uh, a bunch of extra bits. <laughs> so he's actually shorter than both Prime and Megatron, which I think is interesting. Megatron is a, Megatron and Prime are almost pretty much the exact same height than Shockwave is a, is a little smaller than both of them. So, but I mean, I, I love the look of seeing the, those three right there because I mean, that's just straight up G1 cartoon. I, I love it. I, I love the, I love how they, they look together. It looks, it looks very good. So we'll move them off to the side and then we'll get into some more direct comparisons. Here we have Transformers Animated Shockwave. Here we have Transformers Prime Shockwave. Here we have Follow Cybertron Shockwave again. Here we have Dark of the Moon Voyager Shockwave. And then here we have Studio Series Leader Shockwave. So, yeah, here is my, uh, my, legion, my, my legion of Shockwaves. Um, <laughs> I think the, uh, at this point, I think maybe the only other character I have more figures of is maybe Prime and Bumblebee, but even then... My Bumblebee collection is mainly just a bunch of different versions of the same continuity of Bumblebee because I've got a whole bunch of movie Bumblebees. Where with Prime, I've got a whole bunch of different iterations of Prime from, you know, the movies, G1, uh, Prime cartoon, animated. So, I mean, th this is probably my most varied, with the exception of Prime, this is probably my most varied character I have in my Transformers collection because I've got a whole bunch of different shockwaves and a whole bunch of different styles here, so... Yeah, um, and, and, and you know, like I was saying earlier, you know, there's it's cool to see that Shockwave does kind of carry this consistency in his design across all the different iterations. Because what's the in the because here we have Prime, Fall of Cybertron, and G1 style Shockwaves. They all have the the big kind of the chest. The the design differs slightly, but it's you can tell you can tell that it's supposed to be the same thing. Even even animated Shockwave, I'll move Darker Than One Voyager Shockwave here. Even he kind of has that same shape, even if it isn't that kind of... I mean, you can still see there's kind of a consistency in the shaping there. And then, of course, they all have the 
singular eye. Whether, it doesn't matter what color it is, whether it's red, actually, I suppose that one's red as well. Most of, the, most of these are red, but of course the original was yellow. No matter what the color, he always has the one eye, and then he's got the little thing sticking up on his head. You know, these are very G1 inspired by being straight up. You know, that's got a little more spikiness to it. Um, that's very, just, that's just animated stylized there. And then, and of course, you know, Movie Shockwave kind of has the almost devil horns look. So, yeah, I think they look really cool together. And I think I'll just leave them all up here to, st to stand here while I finish up the review. So, yeah, uh, so yeah, that's pretty much it for for Leader Shockwave here. Uh, he, I, despite his faults, you know, the fact that he's a Voyager and he's got all this, and yet, you know, all this extra stuff that I just don't really like when it comes to the robot mode, but I love it when it's all attached in his vehicle mode. You know, the, despite all the extra stuff he has, I still really, really like this figure because I think the, I think this robot mode just looks superb. I mean, it's just straight up G1 Shockwave. We've got we've gotten a lot of G1 style stuff in the last couple of years. Um, I've, I'm starting to get a little tired of it. I want to see it's like I want to see another cartoon when Cyberverse wraps up. I want to see another cartoon come along that really takes takes some risks with the character designs, like Animated did, where it's like you can you can tell this is still supposed to be Shockwave, but it's a very very different rendition of Shockwave. I really I'm really kind of looking. I really hope that the next cartoon does something like that. Because the oh, I, I think that G1, you do kind of run the risk of it becoming a crutch, so to speak. Because even even the movie style, I think the movie the movie stuff going forward is will be varied enough that it will still kind of be different. But you know, the Bumblebee movie, of course, had very G1 inspired designs. And we'll have we'll have to see where they go forward with with the next with the sequel to Bumblebee and then their Cybertron prequel movie. Um, I I I loved you one. I mean, I think all Transformers fans loved you one. I think it would be weird if you were a Transformers fan and you didn't love G one. Um, there's fans like me that maybe could get tired of G one, like. I think there is this big divide between people that have grown up with G1 and people that have grown up with the movies um, and, you know, how different they are, even though they're all, at the, at the end of the day, they're all still Transformers properties. Uh, and, so, and so you see that divide in the fans and, you know, the, the original fans from the 80s that are still into the franchise that still collect and stuff, of course, you know, they're, I mean, they're having the time of their lives right now. You know, the, this is the, this is the, you know, this is probably the best Transformers has ever been for them in terms of the toys because, you know, this is straight up what they saw in the cartoon. You know, I mean, I'm enjoying it, obviously, from I, the couple weeks, two weeks ago, I went over Earthrise Optimus Prime. I love that figure to death. I honestly may be my favorite Optimus Prime figure that I own. Um, I love this. I love this shockwave. I I love the look of it. It's very, you know, like I said, very G one. But yeah, you know, uh, after after we're done with this War for Cybertron trilogy in twenty twenty one, I think Hasbro really needs to move on and start changing up the designs, figuring out something new. You know, doing stuff like I I going back to animated, animated. You know, very different. It has it has those callbacks with you know the the design being consistent between different iterations with the with the one eye you know it's like you can tell it's still shockwave but it, it needs they the next cartoon really needs to be different because if we get to the next toy line and it's just another oh here's more G1 versions of these characters again and then by that point there's going to be the new movies coming out that will probably also be G1 inspired. I mean, it's going to get to a point where most of these toys are going to be looking exactly the same. Again, say what you want about the movies and the quality of the movies, but at least the at least you know the movie Shockwave here. Again, it has the, it has those things. It has the big gun arm. He's got he's got the eye. I mean, the gun's on the wrong arm, but that's whatever. 
um, you know, he, but he's got the big eye. You, know, you can tell it's shockwave, but it's such, it, it is a different interpretation. It is a it's honestly to a degree. I feel like the movies, uh, the movies and animated were are 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 really good for taking the designs and moving them in a different direction. Not all movie designs are perfect. I think that they got a little. I think starting even though Age of Extinction is my favorite of the five movies. I think Age of Extinction was where the the designs of the robots maybe got a little too much away from you know seeing where from being good looking quote unquote transformers you know to a degree that was kind of the point to the robot designs in age of extinction because a lot of them were man-made and so they you know they cheated you know they didn't actually transform like real cybertronians they did that whole pixelization thing um so i suppose it makes sense that a lot of them didn't look like didn't look like real transformers but then yeah, you know, as much as I love how the that interpretation of Hound as a character crosshairs drift, it's kind of hard to see on those figures on, on those on those character models. You know where the car parts go. You know how I, I I question how drift transforms into a helicopter and the Bugatti Veyron. Um, I, and I and I've stated my case for Optimus Prime's design in Age of Extinction in the last night before, where it's like I love the design. I think it's really cool, but it's not a good Optimus Prime design. Uh, and then of, and then of course Bumblebee. You know, there's there's Bumblebee. He's whatever in that in that movie in terms of design. Yeah, so maybe so maybe as they went on, they got a little too far away. But the first three movies, I think, have some really top tier design work. Shockwave being Shockwave being a good case for that. I think yeah, I I said it in my Shockwave review of this guy, not not this guy, this guy back here. Um, I said in the review of that one that I that. Honestly, that may be the best design that the Bayverse churned out. Again, it's not, it's not, it's it, actually, <laughs> I'm kind of contradicting myself there. Because that shockwave isn't necessarily, it, it's kind of like, you know, well, so, well, where do the car parts go? It's like, it's, uh, but the, the, the thing with this, the thing that makes it okay with this, with movie shockwave though, is that we never saw him transform into anything. You know, it's, and if he did, and if he did transform into something, then it was going to be something Cybertronian. So it didn't necessarily need to, we didn't necessarily need to see, you know, where the car parts went. Movie one through three, Optimus, Bumblebee, Ironhide, Ratchet, Jazz, um, Sideswipe, Mudflap and Skids even, um, you know, Dino slash Mirage. Maybe that, maybe, maybe the Mirage is, is stretching it a little bit. The, you know, the movie Decepticons, Barricade, Blackout, Brawl. Bone Crusher, Star, you know, Starscream. A lot of people hate the movie to Starscream, movie Starscream design. I love it. I I think it really works. And again, it still has those traits that you can see. It's like, yeah, that's still visually, it's still Starscream. Move even moving into movie two with some of the Constructicons, Long Haul, Mixmaster, the Soundwave in movie three. Uh, it, you still you still see all those th places where. Yeah, here's the here is the here's where the car parts go. Again, you know the C, because they're CG models and you know it's animation. And, you know, well, I mean, I mean some people complain about there's a lot of cheating and stuff when it comes to transforming the transformers in the movies. But I mean, come on, I mean, Prime is Transformers Prime that, that uses a lot of cheating and animate. Well, actually, hold on, animated is animated is pretty accurate because they deliberately wanted the transformations in the show to be like the toys. Prime, but Prime uses a lot of cheating. RC is a is awful when it comes to that because especially with her mass shifting because she's this tiny little motorcycle, but then she transforms into into this like twelve foot robot. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's like there there's a lot of cheating there. So I mean, that, that that's the thing with this franchise though is that you know not every is you is not everything when it comes to the toys can be represented on screen because the the toys have to cheat in a certain way that's why we have backpacks on figures that's you know that's why whenever you get a car transformer a you know a lot of times the roof is just going to be hanging out on the back of of the, of the figure bumblebee from the movies is a good example of that nine times out of ten you know the his roof is just hanging out on his back um i can't actually actually probably ten times out of ten i can't really think of a movie bumblebee toy where his roof is not hanging out on his back but you you get the point so i mean <laughs> 
So I think I started off this little rant or this little conversation about how they need to stop using G1 as a crutch. Um, they're start because they're starting to get to that point. But uh, yeah, so I mean, I've kind of <laughs> this is a good toy. I li I like the I like this toy. The price point is maybe a little bit much, but he's been out for a while, so uh, I I paid full price because I finally just bat I just I just finally caved and was like, ah, eh, I'll just pick him up because the I haven't seen the. Because at this point, he's, a, you know, he's a year and a half old. He's going to maybe stop, he's maybe going to start disappearing from shelves pretty soon because, you know, old figure is old. But, um, so maybe if you catch him on clearance, that'd be great. Um, I didn't, but I just finally went what the heck and bought him, um, full price. So if, I am mean, I don't, I don't really think maybe he's not worth the full price of the full $50 that he is for a leader. But I mean, if, if you, if you really like Shockwave as a character, then I don't think that I think he, that I think he'll be fine at full price. Um, and then if you can find him on clearance and that, then that's great too. So yeah, I, I, I rec I recommend him maybe not for the full, full price, unless you're like a diehard Shockwave fan, but, um, I think I think he's at, at his core he's still a good figure. I just kind of wish that maybe they had found a, a better way to incorporate some of the some of these extra bits into the into the robot mode and 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 made it not look as silly because like I like I said I think the other mode looks a little silly. But I I think I think this is going to be one of the few toys that actually display in his vehicle mode because I, I I really 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 love his vehicle mode and then that way I won't have this extra stuff sitting off on the side. So yeah, um, that'll pretty much it, be it for this review. Sorry, I kind of went on a little rant there, but it, it's fun to talk about Transformers. It's fun to talk about the things that you love. So I mean, that's, so I, I, I think that's kind of okay. So yeah. Um, so yeah, this has been my review for War for Cybertron leader Shockwave. So here, you know, say goodbye to the council of, of Shockwaves, <laughs> everyone, and I'll see